How's it going guys? Today I want to go over another lead code question. Today our question is from Amazon and it's called Partition Labels. Alright guys, so today our question is from Amazon. It's called Partition Labels. And our problem description says a string S of lowercase letters is given and we want to partition the string into as many parts as possible so that each letter appears in at most one part and return a list of integers representing the size of these parts. Okay, so that's, I think, a very confusing uh, problem description. So we have one example here that we can walk through and hopefully as we go through it, it'll make sense what they're actually asking. So for example one, if they're giving us this string S of all these lowercase letters, we'd want to return the numbers 9, 7, and 8 in a list. And the reason for that is that we would make three partitions of this string, and each of those partitions would be of size 9, 8, and 7 respectively, and these would actually be our partitions. So it tells us the partition A, B, A, B, C, B, A, C, A, another partition D, E, F, E, G, D, E, and the third and final partition H, I, J, K, sorry, H, I, J, H, K, L, I, J. I feel like I'm taking like a vision test. <laughs> um, it says that this partition, this is a partition so that each letter appears in at most one part. You now, partition like this uh, is incorrect because it splits S into less parts. We want to make our string as partitioned as possible. And then as quick notes, it tells us that S will have a length within the length of 1 and 500, and S will only consist of lowercase letters A to Z, which is helpful. Okay, so what the heck is this asking? This is really, all this mumbo jumbo is really just asking us to like try and split a string into as many parts as we can such that each letter appears in each of those own parts. So like the letter A can only appear in one of those partitions. And we have to split the string so that the letter A is only in one of those partitions. We have to do that for any letter, right? Any letter C or D or G or F has to be in its own partition. Every G in that string has to be in its own partition. Every P in a partition has to be in its own partition, so on and so forth. So the reason for this being our answer is because A occurs only in this partition and not anywhere in these other two partitions. Same with B. B only occurs in this partition. Uh, C only occurs in this partition. Same thing with this. D only occurs in the second partition, so on and so forth. So again, if you guys need to wrestle with this problem, that's totally understandable. It's a little confusing, but that's generally the gist of it. So what do we really care about, right? So let's think about this example. So when we walk through this string, we see the letter A and we realize, okay, because A is the letter we're on, and A has to occur in the partition that we're currently in, we know that the very last occurrence of A has to be in our partition. So that makes us say, okay, the earliest that we could possibly partition the string is all the way at this other A, right, that I have highlighted here. So that would be our partition as of right now. We would decide, okay, let's cut it here. But then the problem is that between our current partition, we have another letter B, right? And our B is gonna end before that A, so it's actually not a problem. And then we would get to C, and C is the only character, uh, only occurrence here, right? So that's fine. So we could actually definitively make our partition here. Sorry, here, oh, here. <laughs> so now we look at something like D. We basically ask the same question, right? Where is the last occurrence of D? And it turns out that the last occurrence of D is over here. So again, we're saying, okay, this is our current partition now. It has to be at least this big. But now we're going to go look at E, right? And this is where the case gets interesting. So E occurs past that D. So now our longest or our earliest, sorry, I should really say our earliest point that we can partition this string is at that E. And so I think hopefully you guys are getting the idea of it, but basically every single time we have to ask, can we partition this string? And if we can, we will, right? Because we want to make as many parts as possible. But if we can't, we have to look at the current letter and we have to figure out, okay, where is the last occurrence of this letter? Because we know it has to be in our current partition. And so once we can actually get to that last letter, then we can make our partition. But if any of the letters between our current letter and that last occurrence of the letter we're on appears further, right, for, it's really this way, further for you guys, if it appears further than where we currently are, we have to extend our partition to that point. And so if we ever actually walk all the way to our partition, we can make it and then start the same process again. So it's very confusing. I think this is like a really uh, interesting problem to wrestle with, but that's generally the problem. So what we could really try and do guys is a naive solution, which would be something like O of n squared, where n is the number of characters in the string, 
we could basically say, okay, here's the letter A, where's the last occurrence of A? And then we could scan the remainder of the string finding that. We would find that it's here, and we would make the partition there. Then we do the same thing for B, right? Okay, where's the last occurrence of B? It's here. So we try and cut our partition still at A, right? Because A is the furthest point. And we could basically do that for every character. So that would be N squared. So what do we do to make it faster? Well, we said all we really care about is the last occurrence of each of these characters, because we know that's the earliest point we can make any of these partitions. So if we did some sort of pre-processing and basically just matched each character with its last occurrence, that would really help us speed up the process. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're just gonna track the last occurrence of each of these different characters. And again, we only have 26 because it's letters A to Z lowercase. Cool, so now what do we do after that? Well, after that, we just have to walk through and use that last indexes kind of tracking, right? So we see A, we ask, where's the last point of A? Oh, maybe it's here. Now we get to B. Let's say B was further than that A. Now we extend our partition to here. And we kind of slowly walk through the string. And once we eventually get to that partition point, we cut the string, push it off to the side. We now know the length of it so we can record it for our answer. And then we continue the same algorithm or process through the rest of our string. So let's start writing the code for that. And first, let's just make a list of integers to actually return. So we're gonna say list of integer, and this is gonna be our partition lengths, right? So this is what we're gonna return. We want to know how long each of these partitions are. We're gonna make it a new array list. Awesome. So now let's keep track of the last occurrences of each character, right? So we're gonna say integer last indexes equals new int. And we're just gonna make this 26 because we only have the lowercase letters A to Z. And now what we can do is just iterate through our characters and actually record their last occurrences. So we could just say for int i equals zero, well i is less than s dot length, i plus plus. And now what we can do is we could just say, okay, last indexes of s dot care at i minus a. And so what this is gonna do is gonna take whatever character we have, let's say we have a p, all right, actually, let's make it a little bit simpler for the math. So A, B, C, so let's just take A, right? Okay, if we had A minus A, that would give us zero. If we had B minus A, that would give us one. And so what that's basically doing is it's making us keep track of all these characters in order, right? So A will be our zeroth position, and the last occurrence of A will be in that index. B will be this first position, zero based, um, and the last occurrence of B in our string will be at that index, so on and so forth. So we'll say last indexes of S dot caret I minus a is equal to i, right? Because i is our current index. So again, that's just gonna keep track of a, the last occurrence of a is, I don't know, 12. The last occurrence of c is 15, so on and so forth. So now once we have that initialized, that's really helpful. So now we just have to walk through our string and actually mimic that sort of algorithm. So we could say int i equals zero. So initially we start at the first character. We're just gonna say while i is less than s dot length, and this is really just saying while we haven't gone through the entire string partitioning it, right? We need to continue. Okay, so now is the interesting part, right? Now for the first character, we wanna know where is the last occurrence of this character. So we're just gonna say int n equals, and we're gonna use our last indexes array. So we're gonna say last indexes of s dot care at i, right, minus a, because that is actually gonna give us the correct index. And then that full uh, thing together will give us the actual integer value of the last occurrence of that character. And now we said, okay, while we haven't gotten from that character we're on up to that last index of that character, we need to keep asking the question, is there something further than our current partition length? And if there is, we need to update our end. So we're gonna say int j equals i plus one. So now we're gonna start from the next character and say, does, this la does the last occurrence of this character end further than our current end? And if it does, we need to update our end. So we'll say, wow, our j, is not equal to our n, right? So while we haven't reached this partition length, right? While we haven't actually gotten to this partition length, we need to keep going and asking that question. So we'll just say math.max, sorry, n equals math.max of whatever our n value is right currently. So a, the last occurrence is here, and now we get to b, and now we're asking does b's last occurrence occur after our current end? If it does, we need to update. So we're gonna say math.max of end and last indexes of s dot care at j, and I'm gonna say plus plus just so we don't get stuck in an infinite loop, oops, minus a, right? So again, that's gonna go and look at the next character, uh, subtract a from it so we get the right offset, right, in our last index is array, and then this whole thing will give us the actual integer value of its last occurrence, and we're just gonna max that with our end in that value, 
And so now actually when this loop breaks, we will have walked all the way to that partition length. So all we have to actually say is partition lengths dot add, and we're gonna say j minus i, right? Because j was the thing in front. And we're gonna say plus one because it's zero base. And that's actually gonna give us the length of our partition, right? Awesome. So now what we wanna do guys is we just wanna set i equal to j plus one so that the next time we're in our loop, we're just moving our i up to whatever our j was, right? Awesome. So now once this entire loop finishes, we will have effectively gone through, found some partition, right? Walked all the way up to it, recorded its length in our result, and then set our new i, right? And just continue that algorithm walking through this frame. And so now once this is over, all we actually have to do is return our partition lengths. Awesome, so now let's talk about our runtime. I think for our runtime up here, guys, we're actually just walking through the string once. Well, technically twice, I guess. We're recording the last occurrence of each character, and then we're actually walking through the string again entirely. So that's two to the n, right? Where n is just the number of characters in our string. Big O notation, we, can't, we don't care about the two, so that's really just O of n, where n is the number of characters in our string. In terms of uh, space complexity, we'd actually just think about this as constant space, right? Because no matter how big our string is, we only have lowercase letters, so we only need an array that's 26 characters or 26 spots big. So I think our runtime would be O of n, again, where that's the number of characters on our string, and I think the space complexity would be constant. So let's run this code and make sure that it works. Partition length dot, oh, partition. Oh, sorry guys, we actually wanna start i or j at i, right? So we actually record the initial character. So let's now let's submit this and make sure that it works. Awesome that it does. So guys, that's how to solve partition lengths in Java. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon. If you guys have found this video helpful, do me a favor and leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time.